Hello, in this video we're going to look at uniformly generating points around a surface of a sphere. Now a very brief history of why I'm doing this video is my last video I put out a video and, it, and it's here. It's actually multivariate normal random variable transformed to a multivariate uniform random variable. And I thought that was so intriguing that I was going to put an R video out showing how to implement it in R and show some nice graphs of it generating a circle or a sphere, you know. And and then I thought, well, what's out there? You know, it's like, let me let me look up to see what's actually done. And there's three basic methods. And all three of those methods, I really couldn't find the theory behind why it works. Um, although on method three, I could find one site that, that illustrated the theory why. Um, the others, I couldn't. And so that's why I'm doing this. I'm going to give you the theory of the three methods that I saw on the internet to generate, you know, uniform points around the surface of a sphere. Okay. So, you know, one of the methods, and I'm going to call it method one, generates, you know, independent normal random variables. And that's, you know, how it generates the sphere. And the other method two generates uh, uniform zero one random variables in a block and then gets rid of certain points. And then the points they keep, they transform it into, you know, points around the sphere. And then method three, it, it actually uses spherical coordinates. So it generates the angles in spherical coordinates and then plots those. Okay. So let's go through each of those methods. And, and actually the next video, the follow up video of this is going to be the R program um, illustrating these three methods. Okay. So method one is a normal random variable. Um, so what we do is we generate a multivariate normal random variable. And now since each component is independent, and each variance is one, and it actually doesn't matter what the variance is as long as um, you know you want to keep the variance the same. So it's easy just to say it's one. So, but here, let's say if there this is a um, you know three-dimensional multivariate normal distribution, then each component you can just randomly generate. A normal zero one random variable and then put it in this in a vector and so this is very easy so but the key point in X is that X is rotationally invariant and so and, and actually this method is is discussed the theory for it is discussed in this one in this video but essentially this multivariate normal is you know it's bell shaped or in three space it's hump shaped but in any space, it's like there's a bump in the middle, and any way you put a diagonal down it, it's actually it's the the, the you know the same distribution as hump this way as hump this way. It's you know it's called rotationally invariant, and so if you if you put a rotation matrix on this vector, you actually get the same functional form back, and actually that's the key to why this method works. And so once you generate these multivariate normal random variables, and actually in R you can do this in two lines and it plots these pretty little uh, you know, dots around a circle, around a sphere. So you generate this and then you, you know, vector product, square root, and then uh, you, you take that and divide each component of this uh, vector that you just created and this transform vector, call it y, is y is uniform over the surface of a sphere. So then you um, you just plot that. So if, if this vector, you know, if there's only two components, you plot it in R2 space, and it's a circle. If there's three components, then it's a you know it's a circle, it's a sphere, and four components you can't really plot it. But it doesn't matter the dimensions; it still works. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the next video will be uh, illustrate this in R. So the next one is where they 
generate points in a cube and then they throw out certain points and then what points are left then they uh, normalize them and then those are distributed over a uh, surface of a sphere and so this is this is why it works and so if we let X be distributed uniformly over the interior of a sphere so um, so inside a ball you know or in two space inside a circle we want to generate random points in that in that ball okay and the volume of the ball is this in any dimension K um, so then you can invert and multiply and then this is the functional form of this and this is for in any uh, you know this vector is K by 1 and that's where the, the K you know comes into play here but notice that there's no X 1 2 or 3 over here you're uniformly inside that ball and so it's very easy you know what if you take a rotation matrix to this it's the same density so X is rotationally invariant so you have this ball in space and then any any vector that goes through that through the center and to the point is going to have the same density no matter where that you know that cuts through that ball and again that's the key to why this method works um, so what you do is you um, so if X is uniformly distributed on the interior of this sphere then you normalize it so then you take X transpose X take the square root divide that by each component in this X vector and then that new Y vector is actually uniform over the surface of a sphere and you're done okay but um, and actually for a proof of this it's so similar to what we did here but instead of calling this the multivariate normal we call it this uniform distribution over the interior of a sphere and so the proof is like so similar I'm just going to refer you back to uh, video you know part one which was this video transforming a norm, multivariate normal to a um, univariate distribution so let, let's illustrate this with an example and and actually this is the example that you see in the literature so you have two variables x1 and x2 and you generate them from um, oh I say zero to um, so it's actually minus one to I'm gonna correct that live that is should be minus one to one and then so you generate all these points in here do 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 you know and then um, so you, you have points everywhere but then you get rid of the points in this area in this area in this area in this area so what that means so we generate uh, random variables uniformly in here these two points and they're they're everywhere and then we remove the points where the length is greater than one so that means out here okay so we're creating a uniform distribution over this circle which is the interior of a sphere right and the key point here is that it's rotationally invariant so the distribution is the same as this as it is the same of this as the same as this it's uniform over the top so it's rotationally invariant and again for the proof see this first video but then once you get all these points and remember these are like little vectors you know in in the interior of the sphere then you can normalize them and then the resulting vector are, is a vector that is randomly distributed around this circle and so that's it and so what we're doing is randomly generating points on the interior of that sphere and then you normalize them and then based on the theory 
that should be uniformly distributed over the the surface of that sphere and this is uh, very easy to expand in higher dimensions so let's say you want to do it a, for a ball a sphere in three dimensions so you randomly generate three points and then you check the length to see if it's less than or equal to one if it is keep it if it's greater than get rid of it and you do that you know over and over and over until you get the sample size you want you know and then you then you transform them and then this variable is distributed over the surface of that sphere so then part three is we're going to use spherical coordinates and here's how to do it we find the distribution of each angle generate data for that angle and then plug it back into the x-coordinate system okay so but this must be done must be careful boy i can't spell when we use the and we oh, must be careful and use the jacobian of the uh, transformation so let me illustrate this okay so we're in r2 space in all these examples we have a radius of one and so the uniform distribution over the sphere right the surface area is 2 pi and so this is our distribution that we want to generate data from so what we do is we transform it to spherical coordinates and the Jacobian's one, theta's between zero and one. I don't know, and actually I have a video called spherical coordinates for if you want to learn how to develop spherical coordinates and, and etc. So then we want to find the distribution of theta one. <coughs> so to do that, then you plug these X's into this distribution, take it times the Jacobian, and you get the new distribution, which is this. Now, theta one is uniform over, you know, from zero to two pi. And so um, that is easy to generate from. It, most programs can generate on a uniform distribution. Then whatever value you get, you plug back in here and plot it, and you just repeat. But I'm going to go through this a little uh, more because it's going to help when we go to three space. So first we find the CDF function of this, which means we integrate from zero to theta of our function, and we get this. Now the interesting thing is this, uh, this CDF is uniformly distributed. So if we let u be uniform zero to one and set it equal to this and back solve for theta one, then if we generate normal random variables from 0 to 1, take it times 2 pi, that's how we generate data for theta 1. But you're saying, well, duh, you know, theta is it's a uniform between 0 and 2 pi. Yes, but when we go to higher spaces, it's not that easy, or higher dimensions, I mean. And so that's it. So you generate them, plug it in, boom, x1 and 2 are points around a sphere. Now in x3, we want our distribution to be uniform over the surface of a sphere in three dimensions. And the surface area is 4 pi. So since we're uniform over that there, the density is 1 over 4 pi. Now, um, remember R is 1 in these cases. So to use uh, spherical coordinates, the transformation is this. And again, it's the video that I have on spherical coordinates. Uh, theta 1 is between 0 and pi, theta 2 is between 0 and 2 pi. The Jacobian is sine of, of, of theta 1. So to find the joint density of, of r, theta 1, and theta 2, but since r is always 1, you can ignore it, then you plug these back into this density, take it times a sine. Well, this dent, you know, there's no x's here, so you just get 1 over 4 pi. The Jacobian of the transformation is sine of theta 1. Now let's find the distribution of theta 1. So that means we take this and integrate out theta 2. So we integrate it out from 0 to 2 pi of our density, and then you get this. Now let's find the CDF of this, which means you integrate from 0 to, say, theta 1 of this, and you get this. But this is uniformly distributed. So let's set this equal to u and then back solve for theta 1. And that's what we do. So theta 1 is the arc cosine of 1 minus 2 
u, where u is a random variable between 0 and 1. And, and that's easy to generate. You generate it, take it times 2, 1 minus that, take the arc cosine, boom, that's theta 1, plug it back in here. Now for theta 2, we, um, we have to integrate out theta 1. So that's what we do, 0 to pi, and, and then we do it, and we do it, and we get 1 over 2 pi. Well, f of uh, theta 2 is uniform from 0 to 2 pi, right? So that's easy. You just generate random variables. Um, and then from, from 2 pi. And then you plug those back into this equation. Well, anyway, well, the next video, that's all I have for today on the theory. Hopefully you understood that. Uh, I think understanding is so important into what we do. Um, the next video is going to be in our program implementing each of these and explaining the, each step. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.